Hello photographers, today we're talking about exposure value. Exposure value is how we express and talk about exposure. So we need to make sure we know what exposure is in order to be able to give it a value. Exposure is the total amount of light that you capture and record when taking a photograph. You control your exposure through your ISO, aperture, and shutter speed settings, which physically control how much light is able to enter the camera to be captured. Generally speaking, when we're choosing the ISO aperture and shutter speed settings, we're working to get the exposure indicator to zero. We do that because the exposure indicator is connected to the camera's meter, and the meter is the camera's brain. The meter reads the light in the scene, calculating the average brightness of that scene. And the goal of the camera meter is for that average brightness to be 50%. Generally speaking, a scene that meters to an average brightness of 50% will be a well-exposed photo. So the exposure is how much light we capture, and the value of that is tied to the camera meter and how it evaluates the scene. That value is expressed as a number on the positive and negative scale of the exposure indicator. If you take a photograph with your ISO, aperture, and shutter speed set so that the exposure indicator is at zero, that means your photo has an exposure value of zero. If you were to write that down, it would look like this. EV means exposure value, and zero means your exposure indicator was at zero. If someone asks what your exposure value is for a photo, you can just say the number, in this example, zero. Additionally, if you're talking about your photo, you can say this a couple of different ways. You can say exposure value of zero or EV zero. It might sound like this. For this photo, I had my ISO set to 100, my aperture at f1.8, and my shutter speed at 1 250th for an exposure value of zero. Or for this photo, I had my ISO set to 100, my aperture set at f1.8, and my shutter speed at 1 250th, and it was EV zero. And if you wanted to write your settings down to share this information, you would write it like this. This gives your exposure settings and the exposure value in an easily digestible form. Now, we've just been talking about an exposure value at zero. Zero. But we all know that not every photo should actually have an exposure value of zero. For some scenes you want to overexpose, and for some scenes you want to underexpose. For this, you just use the number as shown on the indicator. But for this, it's really important to include the positive or negative sign. Let's say I was photographing a snow scene, and so I set my ISO aperture and shutter speed to overexpose the scene by one stop. For that, I'd write the exposure value like this, and I'd say that was an exposure value of plus one. If it was underexposed, it would be an exposure value of minus one. Now, if you're not aware, your exposure indicator has a unit of measurement called a stop, and the stop measurement is tied to the exposure value. But before we talk about that, I wanted to let you know that this video has been brought to you by me. It's a lot of work making these videos, and if you wanted to support my channel and the making of these videos, that would be tremendous. You can do that by picking up some sweet Take Some Damn Photos merch, like a t-shirt or a phone case, or if you wanted to become an ongoing supporter, you could join my Patreon and get some really sweet membership rewards. And you can do that at these links right here. Now, before we talk about the stop measurement, we need to clarify that a stop is not the same thing as f-stop. f-stop refers to your aperture setting, such as f2.8, while the stop is a unit of measure for exposure. I generally don't use the term f-stop because it's easy to confuse with the stop measurement. So the stop is a unit of measure and it tells us how much brighter or darker the image is based on the number of stops. A one-stop change affects the brightness of a photo by a factor of two. So if you take a photo with an exposure value of plus one, you've overexposed your image by one stop, which means that image is twice as bright as it would be if the exposure value was zero. And if you take a photo with an exposure value of minus one, you've underexposed your image by one stop, which means that image is twice as dark or half as bright as it would be if the exposure value was zero. So when you know the exposure value of a photo, you not only know what the exposure indicator reading was when the photo was taken, you also know how that affected the brightness of the overall image. Now, you've probably noticed that your exposure indicator doesn't always move in full stop increments. And on your exposure indicator, you have some smaller hash marks in between the full stop values. Those marks are one-third stop increments. When you make an adjustment to your ISO, aperture, or shutter speed settings, a single increment adjustment is not a change of one stop. It's a change of one-third of one stop. 
So when you change your aperture from f5.6 to f5, that opens your aperture up, letting in enough light to overexpose the image by one third of a stop. That would put your exposure indicator on that first hash mark, and that would be an exposure value of plus one third stop, which you would write like this. And this tells us that the image is one third of a stop brighter than it would be if the exposure value was zero. If the exposure indicator was in between two numbers like this, that's an exposure value of minus two and two thirds stops, which you'd write out like this. Now, all of this has been framed as if using manual mode, but exposure value still applies and is used when you shoot in priority modes. The difference is in how you achieve your desired exposure value. In manual mode, you have full control, so you set your ISO aperture and shutter speed to the desired exposure value. In a priority mode, you've given some control back to the camera, and what the camera does by default is adjust the setting or settings that it controls to bring the exposure value to zero. Let's say you're using aperture priority. In aperture priority, you control the ISO and the aperture, and the camera controls the shutter speed. Regardless of the ISO or aperture settings you choose, the camera is going to set the shutter speed to bring the exposure value to zero. By default, all the photos you take in aperture priority will have an exposure value of zero. If you wanted to over or underexpose your photos in aperture priority, you can't change the ISO or aperture because the camera will just change the shutter speed to compensate bringing it back to zero. Instead, you have to use the exposure compensation function to change the exposure value. Let's say you want to overexpose your photos by one stop. You set your exposure compensation to plus one. This tells the camera that you want an exposure value of plus one instead of an exposure value of zero, and so it adjusts the shutter speed to overexpose the photos by one stop. So whenever you change the exposure compensation function, no matter what mode you are in, you are changing the exposure value. If you set your exposure compensation to minus two, your exposure value is minus two. Now there's one other term you may see or hear in discussions of exposure, and that that is the term exposure bias. Exposure bias means the same thing as exposure value. So if you see or hear someone say something like, the exposure bias is plus one, that means exactly the same thing as saying the exposure value is plus one. I prefer exposure value because the meaning is clearer and easier to understand, but either term can be used. So that's exposure value explained. At its core, exposure value is really simple. It's just how we talk about what the exposure indicator was at when we took a photo. But like all bits of technical jargon, Jargon, understanding what that number really means helps give you a much better understanding of the concept. It allows you to extract information about a photo that you can then use in your own photography. And it allows you to talk about exposure and include additional information in a concise way. If you have any questions about exposure value or photography in general, let me know down in the comments. And I have a question for you. Do you tend to over or underexpose your images? Let me know in the comments comments, which is also while well, I'll share what I tend to do. And then do me a favor and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos, and then get out there and take some damn photos. Thank you for watching. Now, I get loads of questions and they all boil down to one thing, which is how do I make my camera do what I want it to do? And here's the thing, your camera is like an instrument and you can't make music if you can't play your instrument. If you want to learn how to play your camera like the instrument it is, visit this link right here to check out my guide to shooting in manual mode video course.